Welcome to another episode of Life Outside the Box. I am your host, Extra the Director, and I'm here with a very special guest today. My dear friend Chantel, how you doing? Can't complain. I'm trying to represent for all the uh, female sneakerheads. Oh, you, well, you know you are actually the very first female I had on this show. How you feel about that? I'm, I'm excited. Hopefully I set the tone right um, and represent for all the different dynamics in the female sneakerhead world. Okay, okay, okay. I like that. I like that. So now, um, tell me, how, how long have you been in the sneakers? Uh, um, I would say since first grade. Um, I've played basketball since first grade, um, so that was kind of where my love of sneakers uh, generated from. Both my parents played. Um, my mom played in high school. My dad played in high school. Um, my mom was better. Sorry, Dad. Um, <laughs> my, my mom was better, um, and she was uh, Bronx Westchester champions four years in a row. I'm on senior Scanlon. Um, my dad played basketball and football and wasn't a uh, champion, so yeah. That's where my love stemmed from. Okay, okay. And what, what sneaker was it that got you into um, sneakers? What was the first sneaker you seen to say, you know what, I like these. This, this is what I'm into right here. Um, from what I could remember, I definitely would say the Black Toe 14s. Um, they dropped in 1999 and I was 10. I'm kind of aging myself out there. But um, yeah, when I saw that shoe, it was something that I had to have. Um, the aesthetic of the shoe, um, it was designed by the Ferraris um, that uh, Michael Jordan, you know, he drove in the M550. Mm -hmm. um, and it, to me, it was just cool. Like back in the day, I was into cars too. And I'm into cars now. And just the aesthetic of the shoe is just is beautiful. Um, Everyone kind of like sleeps on the 14 and you know gravitates towards the Air Jordan 1 or the 11 and to me the 14 is just classic. So. Yeah, the 14 is very classic. I'm glad you brought that point up about the Ferrari, um, the, his shoe being modeled after the 14, or after the Ferrari, excuse me, um, because you know he released an edition of the 14, uh, the yellow Ferrari 14s, the black Ferrari 14s and also the red Ferrari 14s. Um, I own two of them, I'm trying to get the third one so you know. But um, okay, so you so you would you say that 14 is your holy grail sneaker? Uh, yes and no. Um, the reason why I would say yes um, is because it means so much to me, um, especially because um, I played TYO in AAU basketball. Um, <laughs> we were at my championship game um, and. Literally, we were down by three. If I hit the three, we would have won. Um, obviously, if, well, not we wouldn't have won, we would have tied. Um, but if I missed the three, we would have lost. Um, I missed the three. Um, and I was like crying my eyes out. And that whole year, I kept asking for those shoes. And no one, my grandfather, my dad, my mom, no one would buy them. I'm literally like crying my eyes out. I walk out the gym, my grandfather's at my game, he comes out and he brings me back to Sports Authority and we go get the shoe. Wow. Um, okay. Later, later that year, um, like I had a whole bunch of AAU tournaments, CYO tournaments. Um, I'm playing in that shoe. Um, I won MVP, Most Improved Player, and we were champions next year. So that shoe like resonates with me in ways that no other shoe will. Um, I feel like it defined my work ethic. Um, just like if you give it your all, you practice, you play how you practice. Right. I'm sorry, you practice how you play. Um, it's just gonna define how you are, like in in professional field, in basketball, in your life, anything. Like that, so yeah. Wow, that's an amazing story. That's actually a first <laughs> that we have here on this show. <laughs> it's a story that detailed as far as what the sneaker um, impacted in your life, and that's that's, that's amazing. Um, so tell me what you bought here with us today. Um, I bought two. So like I said, I was talking about the um, the Black Toe 14s. This is going to be the 2005 release, and I still have the 1999 release, um, which is in horrible condition, but I will never let go of it for the reason why I just told you. Um, to me, again, it resonates so much. Kobe Bryant is one of my favorite basketball players ever. I don't care what anyone says, anyone out there, Kobe Bryant is the best basketball <laughs> player ever. Um, since I was seven, I've been a fan of him. Um, and again, uh, when I was 10 years old, that really resonated with me. Um, what he brought to the game at such a young age, coming straight out of high school, okay. um, winning that 3P championship, and then going on that drought, and then winning that those two championships back to back um, by himself, well, not by himself, with Paul, Paul Gasol. Um, to me, it just defined what Mamba mentality was, and I try to bring that um, with everything that I do. Um, so these sneakers uh, both remind me of that. All right, let's see the shoe.
one is a 2005 release and I had to get it because, like I said, my 1999 one was absolutely horrible. They're finished. Um, and the thing that's different about it is that um, on the 1999 release, you see the lines that are on the side. In the 2005 release, they did not have the lines on the side. Um, to me, it's just a holy grail of mine um, and I have to have it in my collection. Um, it's just such a beautiful shoe. And everybody, like, again, they sleep on the 14s. They're like, right. oh, they do. They're uncomfortable. And to me, it's just it's just a classic shoe. Modeled yeah. after his car that he pulled up to, um, you know, the, the Chicago Bulls Stadium in. Um, it's just an awesome shoe. And the colorway is so classic. Back right. then, you didn't have the ability to switch like you do now. You had to have it match with your uniform. And it's just, it, it, to me, it shows professionalism. Like, you show up, you're going to practice how you show up. So. Absolutely. And I'm glad that you said the 14 is slept on because it's a very slept on sneaker. And it's crazy because I was in my closet yesterday and um, I'm just rearranging my stuff and I'm looking and I have a very big collection of 14s that I didn't even realize I had. Like I have the Laney 14s in my collection. I have two, I have two sets of the uh, Ferraris in my collection. Um, I have the black and quilted 14s that came out, I believe, last year, uh, where it's black on one side, quilted on the other. Um, I have terracottas. Um, I have, I have a few, I have a few 14s <laughs> okay. that that uh, uh, that I add to my collection, and I didn't even realize I had that many. And a 14 is such a very nostalgic shoe, and it's very appreciated to know that he modeled that sneaker after his car. Um, you know, him and Tinker Hatfield got together and they created a uh, crazy design for this sneaker. And you, earlier you said you have the um, original ones that came out with the lines in them. Um, <laughs> and you showed them to me before we started filming, but I want you to show them to the camera, show them to the fans and, sh and let, the, let them see how that looks. <laughs> um, I apologize to all the female sneakerheads out there. All of my sneakers do not look like this, I promise. Um, but these are the ones from 1999. condition it's like walking and talking this one's missing a shoelace um, it's but these I mean these are what I literally practice my life away in I was in the gym 24-7 um, before school after school um, I was in a rec center and these are what I played in and I got I still have my MVP trophy I still have my most improved trophy um, I still have my championship trophy and this is like it's just, it's beautiful. It's, yeah, it's, that's, as you can see, well, she, she really the world, wears these What I want to say to the world is like, wear your sneak, like wear your, can I curse? Or like, wear, Absolutely. Your, wear, 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 wear your damn sneakers. Like, I get it. I understand the resale game and everything like that now, but like, if you're really immersed in this culture, like just wear your sneakers. You're 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 immersed immersed in this culture because you love it, right? So wear the damn sneakers. I wore my sneakers, like as you can see, they're talking. Like I will never get rid. That's a little bit more than talking, like, right. but <laughs> right. I can't, but I get what you're right, saying. Right. I can't wear these again, but just like wear your sneakers, enjoy the culture, and bring it back to what it was. Like reselling isn't everything. If you have to provide for your family, like I get that, but at the same time, like people who are immersed in the culture and love the culture like they do it for the stories behind this shoe they do right it the history it, you know mm -hmm. so, yeah yeah well These are my favorite. I, I can see that <laughs> yeah i appreciate you i uh, appreciate you for bringing those here that is the first that i've ever seen as the first on life outside the box that's amazing um so uh, briefly tell me uh what is the sneaker that you don't have in your collection but you really need to get your hands on. Okay, it's not just a sneaker, it's three sneakers. Okay. Um, and if I got these three sneakers, I think I would, don't quote me on this, because um, my partner would be like, you said that on, you know, on, on Life Outside the Box. Um, but if I got my hands on these three sneakers, I think I could leave the sneaker game. Oh, no, I gotta hear this. <laughs> I gotta hear this. Please tell me. Right. Um, those three sneakers would be um, the Union LA Ones, both of them, the Storm Blue, um, and I think it's called like the Union Blue. Okay. Um, the reason for that, I felt like for the past, I would say like three or four years, I started to fall in love with um, collabs because of the story that they told. Mm -hmm. um, the way that the Union LA's uh, were initially released, they were released at the, um, the Rose Market Bowl uh, Festival. 
called, right. um, like flea market, and they were there. And I remember Sean Weatherspoon was there, um, and he was just like picking up some shirts and stuff like that, and recording people. And people picked up the shoe, and they were just like, "Oh no, this is fake, right?" And just the story that it tells with Union and the Air Jordan One, it's just it's such a bomb silhouette to me. It's just like. It's kind of like a mix of like a what the and a top three all in mm-hmm. one. Um, I get then, that, yeah. Then you have the two tone with the shoelaces. You have the orange and then you have the tan. It just tells such a beautiful story. And like we were talking before, um, the Jordan One was never my top shoe. Like right, ever. right. Um, it I wasn't feel, mine either. Exactly. And I'm in love with them now. So. <laughs> and I feel like um, everyone can dress it up or they can dress it down. Yeah, um, absolutely. Tux like um, Jason Sadusky, he does it all the time with his Elevens and his Ones. The actor. Um, you can wear it, you know, on like a chill day, going to a barbecue. Um, but that collab definitely, if I had that, both of them, um, I could lead the sneaker game. The second shoe would definitely be the Miro Sevens, um, which re- and it, to me, everybody hates the shoe. Um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of Sevens. Seriously? Olympic is probably Olympics and Brodos is probably as far as I go. Okay. The the Miro Olympic Sevens dropped in I want to say in 2000, and what I love about it is that obviously it represents um, Michael Jordan and the Dream Team, right? But also it has a painting from like it has a painting splattered on it mm-hmm. um, from an artist that was in um, Spain at the time, and it represents like the woman and the bird, but also being free. Um, the fact that it's white and has the black silhouette, no other seven is like that at all. Right. Um, and again, it's a collab, and I, I love that shoe. The third shoe would definitely have to be a Kobe shoe, um, and it would be the um, Kobe Four Prelude um, because it represents his fr- uh, his second to last finals MVP. Okay. Um, just because, again, Kobe Bryant is the best basketball player to ever live, <laughs> um, period. Um, I would definitely say that the reason why I need that shoe is because it showed his worth e- work ethic. Um, everybody didn't give him his credit with um, Shaq. Um, right. And I feel like they say, oh, well, if he didn't have Shaq, you know, he wouldn't have won. If they didn't have Kobe, if you look at stats, they wouldn't have won either. So um, I would definitely say that I need that shoe. And if I had those three, I think I could leave the game. I don't think you would leave the game, but <laughs> <laughs> but I understand what you mean. Okay. Those are the those are the holy grails for you, and those are the sneakers that you you know you will add to your arsenal that nobody can talk to you, nobody can say anything to you with no. those sneakers in your arsenal. No. That's amazing. That's amazing. Hey, listen, I really appreciate you for coming on this episode of Life Outside the Box. That this was an amazing experience for me. Um, Fellas, y'all gotta step y'all game up. She came with so much knowledge and so much, so much history behind her love of shoes. It's gonna be real difficult. And she set the ball for the rest of the females that come on the show, because there will be plenty more. But thank you so much um, for coming here, and I appreciate you. Thank All you right? so much for having me. Absolutely. My name is Exeter Director, and this has been Life Outside the Box. All right, guys. We reached a part of the show where I take a sneaker out of my personal collection and unbox it right here on the show. As you can see, we're doing things a little bit different this episode, so be sure to let me know what you think. Today, we will unbox the Air Jordan Terracotta 14s. This sneaker right here is a special one. The designer Edison Chen put together this colorway as a way to bridge the gap between Eastern and Western civilization fashion sense. The sneaker is modeled after China's terracotta army, which were actually sculpted statues made of a reddish clay that were buried when China's first emperor died in the year 210 BC. The sneaker is a grayish matted suede with a terracotta rusted pink on its accents and a Chinese medallion that hangs from the back of the shoe. I was really lucky to win these off the Nike sneakers app and I'm proud to have these in my collection. That's all I got for you for now. Thank you for watching another episode of Life Outside the Box. I am your host, Extra the Director, and I'll see you guys next week for more.